With all the changes to the inventory and item gathering, I think it's time for a new updated inventory management guide. We're going to go over everything between types of storage, what you should sell and what you should keep, and how to make sure you're getting the most out of your inventory space. This is going to be a comprehensive guide and I'll be mentioning a lot of other videos to which I will put this up whenever there's a video listed in the description box. Before jumping in, I want to give a huge shout out to Sonic Rose in my Discord for their Patreon support. Your support protects me from the ever-changing YouTube algorithm and I dedicate this video to you, so thank you. Let's first go over types of inventory. We have retainers, which you start with 2 and can have a total of 10. 2 included, 7 you can add for $2 per month per retainer, and 1 you get for signing up for the companion app, which is $5 a month. I personally just have 9 retainers for the extra $14 but this is not necessary as much as it used to be. I find that I can probably get away with 2 less retainers if I really wanted to but I like the extra space to keep things organized in different categories but that's just my personal preference. Even if you just have the 2 or 3, I think you're totally going to be fine. We also have Chocobo Saddleback to which you'll have 70 slots. Now a worthy note here is if you do get the premium version of the companion app, not also will you get one retainer, but you will also get a double chocobo saddlebag space upgrade, which means instead of 70, you'll have 140. So it's really like a retainer and a half for $5. If you have the extra money, then go for it. If not, I wouldn't really worry about it. You also have your armory chest, which is different from your inventory. You can find the armory chest just under settings and each piece has something between 25 to 30 slots. Now, I personally do not like to keep things in the armory chest. I just rather keep it in the inventory and then manage it from there and then equip whenever I need it, especially as you level up more jobs. This gets really easily cluttered and you can lose track of stuff very quickly. As well as when you're leveling, you're going to be changing your gear quite a lot so it can get really cluttered with low level items pretty quickly. If you're a crafter or gatherer, I would invest in at least one or two extra retainers, so a total of four. You can do it with less, but you'll be spending a lot more time moving things around and selling things. So if you want to be a little more comfortable, I would say even one extra is totally worth the $2. Now, these are the main forms of inventory you can have, so I would not count on anything else. I would say the hot tip here is to make sure to glamour things when you can glamour them, put the gear in the armoire when you can, and keep your inventory as free as possible from gear just sitting there. I'm going to give you a foolproof way to deal with materials as they come into your inventory later on. Remember, now we should have more space because they got rid of gathering high quality items, which is saving double the space just from the get go for all those aspiring gatherers and crafters out there. You are still able to craft high quality items though, but at least base materials will save you a lot of space. Just something to keep in mind for those who want to jump into crafting and gathering. Now let's break down the different types of inventory you can have. Gear, which is considered to be tools, weapons, accessories, and armor. Medicines and meals, which are usually consumables. Materials, which break down to types of bone, cloth, dye, ingredients, leather, lumber, metal, parts, reagents, seafood, and stone. Now that seems kind of like a long list, but you'll easily be able to start understanding it as you see them pop up throughout your journey. Pretty much everything on that list other than parts and dyes are crafting ingredients. You can see the type of material listed here on the tooltip just down at the bottom. We also have minion and mount items to use to obtain that minion or mount. So please make sure to actually use the item in order to be able to summon it in the future. If you already have that mount or minion, you'll see just a little pop up that says that you can't have more than one of this item. So you know that you can either sell it on the market board or discard it. Or better yet, be super nice and give it to someone else. Many of the times, if you're in an FC, you can just ask any of your FC members if they've already had this mount or minion and make someone's day a whole lot better. We then have some miscellaneous amount of items that you're going to run into pretty consistently and those are catalyst, crystals, demi materia, fishing tackle, gardening items, housing items, and material orchestrations. Now things like the crystals you won't really have to worry about because there is a specific section in your inventory for those and they don't actually take up any inventory space. Everything else on this list does so you'll have to determine if you're going to keep it or not. Catalyst you really don't need Demi Materia, you can probably sell on the market board if you come across any. 
fishing tackle unless you're going to fish you can just sell this housing items we will cover later in its own specific section and the orchestration scrolls i honestly just use them whenever i'm able to and if i already have them i just sell them to the npc vendor working down the list let's start with gear each gear breaks down into different types and there's a line of processes you can follow in order to determine what to do with that piece of gear. Now, I won't be including actual gearing from leveling as you should be just equipping everything that's better or using poetics and then level 90 gear after that. We are talking about the insurmountable amount of gear that you're gonna get from dungeons, MSQ quests, and so on and so forth. First of all, you never want to sell your gear to an NPC vendor. There is always a use for it and selling it to a regular NPC vendor is not one of them. The first question you got to ask yourself, is it better than my current gear? Which is an easy question to find the answer to as you can just compare your current gear with the item comparison button. You can also hit the recommended highest gear currently with this button right here. You have to have the gear in your armory chest though for that button to work. Can I use this gear for glamour? Now we do not equip glamour here in this game. There is a glamouring system, albeit ancient, but I still see some people make this mistake when they like an outfit. It's a level one item with no stats and they're level 40 and they equip it. This is going to destroy your stats and make playing the game pretty difficult, if not near impossible. Just make sure if you're going to use that gear for glamour that you don't let it sit and take up inventory space and you actually utilize the glamour system. The next question is, can my retainers use this gear? While you're leveling your retainers, you may not need any gear if you followed my guide on how to level retainers from 1 to 90 with no gear, but eventually they will. So if you're getting high level battle gear for your battle retainers, you may want to save it to use it for later. That being said though, you can just use the current high end poetics gear that you can get at the end of the game for your battle retainers once they reach that level. I only mention this because some people still like to hold on to stuff just to use because that's just the kind of people they are. Can I sell this gear on the market board? Now as long as you did not equip it and use that gear and it has zero spirit bond, you can possibly sell this on the market board through your retainers. Now not all gear is sellable. If you see the untradeable title on your gear, then you know that you won't be able to sell this. And even though most dungeon gear is untradeable, there are still a few pieces that you can sell that sometimes go for a lot of money. So just make sure when you go to your retainers and you hit to sell, see what shows up that you're able to sell and just check the price. You never know how much money you can make. The other gear that you could be selling a lot of is your MSQ gear. Now there's very few reasons why you need the MSQ gear other than one part in Stormblood in order to hit a certain item level. So you can be selling this gear for sometimes 10 to almost 90,000 gil. And people can be buying it for a slew of reasons. So don't ever count yourself out for selling that gear and you can sometimes make a lot of money by endgame doing this. Don't assume just because you don't need it doesn't mean that someone else doesn't. Can I get grand company seals for it? Now this is where the majority of your dungeon gear goes to as GC farming is very important in Final Fantasy XIV. You will need to do a little bit though in order to do this. It just takes a few hours to get to the certain rank that you need, but it is important that you do it because you can be missing out on hundreds of thousands of gill making as well as stocking up on very important items that you can only get through the grand company. Some of the more general items you can get are glamour prisms, venture tokens, free teleports to your grand company, but you also can get specific items like minion and mount coffers, emotes, and so much more. If you are rolling greed on all of your dungeon gear like you should be, you will have no shortage of GC seals. Last but not least, you can desynthesize it. This is just another part of the game in order to get materials and items back from those pieces of gears that you can't do anything with, and most commonly are the regular normal gear that are unsellable on the market board. This is my last resort, and I never make it this far as I always find a use for it with one of the previous methods. Now this might seem like a lot, but once you start getting into regular gameplay, you will easily be able to deduce what 
the best thing to do is with each piece of gear that you get. You also have a few random types of gear that you'll run into like level one gear, which usually means that it's a glamor piece. You also have antiques, which looks like gear pieces, but they are turn-ins to get gear, but only the current raid are important ones. All others you can discard unless you want something for a glamor piece, which again, usually it's not the best looking. I repeat, the level one gear is not meant to be equipped. You do not know how many times I've ran into a dungeon and the tank has had level one gear piece equipped because they liked it as a glamour. Next up is crafting materials. Now at this point you gotta decide what you're gonna do with these. Like I said above, if they are bone, cloth, ingredients, leather, lumber, metal, reagents, seafood, or stone, you will probably need these in some way or another when you start crafting or leveling your crafters. But if it's not something you want to do right now, you don't want to overcommit and keep all of these things in your inventory because they will stock up very, very quickly. You are better off selling these to the market board for some extra gill or selling them to an NPC vendor if they're only one gill on the market board. I would still check because sometimes you can run across materials that go for a lot of money because people don't want to go and gather them themselves. So just get in the habit of always checking how much something goes for on the market board because you might strike gold. Any crafting materials that are super special, the game makes it a little difficult for you to be able to get rid of like unique crafting materials. But those aren't as easily able to come by so you don't have to worry about accidentally selling or getting rid of something like that. Anything you can sell to an NPC vendor or on the market board is always obtainable again. If you're not crafting at all at the beginning and just want to do MSQ, then I would just sell everything. There is one special rule to this, and that is unlocking crafters and gatherers and leveling them up through Grand Company turn-ins. If you're going to do this, then you're definitely going to want to save some materials for that. Moving on to housing items, you should be keeping the ones you might want for your house or apartment or trying to sell them on the market board. Housing items can go for a lot of money, so you always want to make sure to check the price on the market board because some of these are very expensive. And even some dungeons can drop some amazing housing items. An example being you can get a verdant partition from a level 60 dungeon called St. Moshian's Arbitorium, to which the final boss of this dungeon will drop that and on my server easily sells for 300,000 gil. I believe it is a 50% drop chance, so still, you want to double check your housing items you get from dungeons. They do have a way of sneaking into your inventory. Materia. Now, battle materia, I would say you can just get rid of, or you can keep to use to pentameld later on, but most of the time you just need the current level of the expansion, which for Endwalker is level nine and level 10. You may also want to keep a little inventory of seven and eights because they can be used for pentamelding. Crafting and gathering materia, on the other hand, is a little bit of a different story. I would encourage keeping crafting and gathering materia as they are far more valuable than the battle materia. Even the very low ones can be very useful in endgame. So I would say anything from level 4 to the current level 10, you should keep without a doubt. If you're not crafting and gathering near the beginning of the game, you probably won't run into these too much, but some MSQ story quests will give you these or blue unlock quests. So it's just good to understand that you should be keeping your crafting and gathering materia. Now we have a special category of items called untradeable items. This is kind of general, but you kind of just have to roll with the punches with this one. Generally, if you can get an untradeable item easily by just picking it up or playing through the game, odds are you can get it again pretty easily. If you had to go through a special raid or dungeon to get that untradeable item, maybe look it up and see if there's any future value of it. Now I'm not talking about gear here as we already come up with a foolproof plan on handling that. This is more for those trinkets you get when you're doing certain dungeons and trials. Some examples of the items are Gordian bolts, ancient armor, blades of antiquity, gal coins, etc. These are just old turn-ins that are not prevalent anymore so you can get rid of these types of things. A really good thing to maybe help a little bit to make it click is most old raid chest items Let's say the Alexander raid, for example, these are completely trash. You can just get rid of all of this. 
most extreme trials materials that can drop from primals are crafting materials so it's good to check if they sell for anything we also have cracked clusters cracked stellar clusters anything cracked which you can get from leveling roulette or anything like that these clearly state in the tooltips menu that these are for materia so you definitely want to keep these as you'll be able to trade them in for materia later on food is super important all the way up to level 90 and after level 90 so you should be keeping food at all times going for the experience buff now there are a few ways you can do this as you're going to get food throughout your journey in eorzea some players will just use the food that they get through the msqs as it's a three percent buff which is tons of experience when you're talking about millions and millions of experience you'll need for later levels other players who don't want to bother with this sort of thing and they just sell the food they can get, they end up just buying a stack of raisins from the first NPC vendor in the starting main city. They are super, super cheap and you'll always have that experience buff going for very little gill. Now, don't get me wrong, stats are important, but they make a very small difference until you're at the end game. So there's no reason to worry about them when you're going through the main story or leveling up alts. Medicines and potions run under this as well. You can have them if you pick them up, but most jobs have built-in abilities to keep you alive, so you have some use, but I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase these. As around level 30, you can just have your chocobo healing you out in the outer world. Dyes are completely up to you and how far you want to take glamoring. Most dyes can be purchased fairly cheaply. The only few dyes are the ones you can get from venture coffers from Quick Ventures, which are from your retainers. Since these are a little rare, you want to keep those. You can check out any normal dyes on the market board. It can be a little difficult to figure out what color they are. Your best bet is to go to your character menu and click on a gear that you want to dye and click on the dye button. Here you can preview all the colors you may want to look for and go from there, which is way easier to do. Once you find a dye you like, just a quick Google search will tell you how to get it. You can also click this button here to see all of your gear and then dye all of your gear that same color to see if you're going to like it before you actually purchase it. You are going to have to make some decisions at this point on what materials you want to prioritize. Let's say, for example, you just want to go through the main story and level gatherers. Well, you'll just be getting a lot of those materials. And if you don't intend to craft, you can just sell them. If you just want to do main story, then you can get rid of everything other than armor and wait until you unlock Grand Company around level 20 and turn those in for Grand Company seals. Don't feel overwhelmed as generally materials are always obtainable again, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, let me give you a little bit of insight as to someone who is at Endgame and how I manage my inventory. I primarily just keep most of my Endwalker materials. Now I have nine retainers, so I am able to stockpile a lot more as sometimes a lot of endgame crafts will require lower level materials. So if you're planning on getting more retainers, you're gonna have more room in order to figure out the path you wanna take. I personally keep just about everything that I know that I'm gonna be able to craft with. And this includes housing items since I want to buy a house eventually. Any of the relics or job specific gear that is going to be used for glamour, I will keep in my chocobo saddlebag. So it's always right there if I need it, but not taking up any other space. At this point, anything I need, I can just easily have retainers go out and get it for me, or I can just go jump on my chocobo and give it myself pretty quickly. I have my retainers broken down into specific materials so that I always know where to go when I need something. Retainer 1 always has my current endgame and walker stuff. 2 will have my alchemist materials. 3 will have my cottons and my leathers. 4 will have all of my rocks and my ingots. 5 will have my materia. 6 will have my lumber and my branches. 7 has all of my food and my meals. 8 has all of my dyes, and 9 will have all of my housing items. Now, I personally haven't had to shuffle anything around in a long time, but some of my retainers are really high on the inventory management, and some have really low inventory management. Once I get overflowed, that's when I will move things around and restructure. Now, you have an almost near complete breakdown of all materials you can come across generally and how to handle them. If you happen to have any questions about materials, feel free to comment down below or better yet, join my discord and we're always happy to help in there answer any questions that you might have. I want to give a humble thank you to my Patreon supporters for if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be able to put out continued content like this. 
If you would like to support this channel's content or get into my public discord, you can find that link in the link tree down below. If you want to watch more Endwalker tutorials, tips, guides, and how-tos, then you can click here.